Hello, welcome once again to the EMAT learning platform. Uh, this is still your teacher Peter Ikaja. I'm going to take you through the derivatives of inverse trigonometrical functions. And now we are going to go direct and begin with a simple one, and that is going to be sine inverse of x. They want it, they want us to differentiate sine inverse of x with respect to x. So what basically do we do here? Of course, we have to begin by letting y to be sine inverse of x, the function we are given. And if this is true, then it implies that actually sine of y is equal to x. It implies that sine of y is equal to x. Then from this point, we are going to simply differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I will have derivative with respect to x of sine y is equal to derivative with respect to x of x. So... That is going to be our next step. Now, when you're depreciating sine y, you need to be a little bit careful. Why? Because you have to first depreciate the angle with respect to x. That will give you the y dx. Then after, you depreciate cos, I mean sine of y, to give you cos of y. So it means you shall have cos of y, but the y dx. Don't forget that, because the y dx is obtained by depreciating the angle with respect to x. So all this is going to be equal to 1 because the derivative of cos y, I mean the derivative of x, is actually 1. Now from this level, we are basically going to make dy dx the subject so that we have dy dx as 1 out of cos of y. Now when you get back to this, we need to now express cos of y in terms of x. And what are we going to do? We can begin from the first identity of trigonometry, where we know that cos squared y plus sine squared y is actually 1. If this is true, then when I make cos y the subject, it becomes cos y giving us the square root of 1 minus sine squared of y. So cos y becomes that. Or, if not, someone can go back and use this with the right angle triangle, uses Pythagoras theorem, and still gets back the same expression. So it means now dy dx is going to be 1 out of square root of 1 minus sine squared of y. But remember, we know sine of y as x, as you look at it here, Sine of y is x, so it means I'm going to substitute x here, but of course this is squared, meaning we shall get our dy dx, shall get dy dx as 1 out of square root of 1 minus x squared. So when you differentiate sine inverse of x, you actually get 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let us move on to another question. So question 2 tells us to depreciate cos inverse of x with respect to x. And definitely we have to begin by letting y to be cos inverse of x, like we did in the previous question, so that now this implies that cos, this implies that cos of y is actually x. Then we again depreciate both sides. Shall I say derivative with respect to x of cos y? Uh, is equal to derivative with respect to x of x. So now when you differentiate cos y with respect to x again, uh, you first differentiate the angle that will give you dy dx. So it means at the end of the day, our product, I mean our result will be negative sine y, but dy dx. All this equals to 1 because when you differentiate x, you get 1. So from this level, we again make dy dx the subject, and as you can see, we can have this negative affecting the 1, so that we have negative 1 out of sine of y. Then again, we can go back to the first identity of trigonometry, or we can basically use a right angle triangle uh, with incorporation of Pythagoras theorem, and then the Sokatoa to help us find sine of y in terms of x. But for this case, I will simply say from the first identity, sine y is also going to be as good as the square root of 1 minus cos 
squared of y, meaning that dy dx will now be negative 1 out of square root of 1 minus cos squared of, of y. But remember, cos of y from the beginning here was x, so it means at the end of the day, our final answer will be dy dx giving us negative 1 out of square root of 1 minus x squared. So now you realize that when you differentiate cos inverse of x, you actually get negative uh, 1 out of square root of 1 minus x squared. So in other words, the derivative of cos inverse of x is simply the negative derivative of sine inverse of x. That is a relationship that we can easily observe. Let us move on to tan inverse of x. Okay, so uh, we again letting y to be tan inverse of x, and this implies that tan of y is going to be the same as x. We then now get the derivative with the respect to x of tan of y, giving us the derivative with the respect to x, but of x. So when you differentiate tan y, now we are going to get sex squared y but dy dx the dy dx comes from the derivative of the angle is equals to automatically one and it means we shall now say dy dx is going to be one divided by sex squared of y but remember sex squared has a very good relationship with tan uh, whereby we know that sex squared is the same as one plus tan squared of y so it now definitely means that we have dy dx as 1 out of 1 plus uh, tan squared y. But remember, tan of y is already x, so it means I will basically uh, substitute the value of tan y, but I square it, giving us the final result as dy dx equals to 1 out of 1 out of, sorry, 1 out of 1 plus uh, x squared and this becomes the derivative of tan inverse of x now i'm going to do uh, one of the other derivatives for example i can do for you sec inverse then i will give you a trial of cos inverse i mean cosec inverse and then cot inverse of x okay now for sec inverse of x we shall still let y to be sec inverse of x uh, that implying that sec of y is actually x then we take the derivative on both sides with respect to x so we shall say derivative with respect to x of sec y is equal to derivative with respect to x of x when you depreciate sec y we shall get sec y tan y but dy dx but dy dx and all this comes to of course one because when you differentiate x with respect to x you get one then automatically we have to make dy dx the subject and this will give us a one out of sec y sec y tan y now, if this is true, we can uh, try to formulate this and play around with the mathematics uh, because you know that sec is actually uh, 1 out of cos. Tan is actually sine out of cos. So if this is true, then I can say this is 1 out of uh, 1 over cos. You can call this 1 over cos y times tan, tan is actually going to be sine y, sine y divided by cos, cos y. So when you look at this carefully, it takes us to, uh, takes us to 1 out of, 1 out of sine y 
but still this out of cos squared of y. And this takes us to something like uh, 1 out of sine y, 1 out of sine y, 1 out of sine y times, because if you take the reciprocal, maybe we can go direct and simply say this becomes cos squared y out of sine y cos squared y out of sine y then what we are going to do is this time we shall use a right angle triangle look for the expression for cos and look for the expression for uh, sine then we do the substitution there now something to note with care here is that if sec y is equals to x it means cos y will be 1 over x y because sec y is 1 over cos y so if cos y is that now it means I will have the y here. Uh, cos is always adjacent out of hypotenuse. So I will have that there. And uh, then I use Pythagoras theorem. And this will give me square root of x squared minus 1. Then from here I can be in position to actually get the value of sine y. Because I already know what cos of y is. It is simply 1 over x. So sine y from this triangle will basically be sine y from this triangle will be the opposite which is a square root of x squared minus 1 divided by the hypotenuse so what does this mean now it means the dy dx we had here now is going to turn out to be dy dx equals to cos squared so this is going to be 1 out of x uh, but squared then divided by divided by sine of y but sine of y is the square root of x squared minus 1 all this divided by x and if you multiply this numerator by the reciprocal of this denominator it gives us dy dx as it will give us 1 out of x squared times x but out of square root of x squared minus 1. And when you look at this, the x can reduce with this. And if that reduces, then it means we shall get the answer as 1 out of x square root of x squared minus 1.